And I think sometimes when I sit in that chair and look at the gallery, that there are the ghosts of the suffragettes from time to time who look down and say, well, girls, you've not done too badly, but you've still got a long way to go. When are you ready? Well, maybe they have to. Yes. Locally, in order to, um, okay, get an extra bit of money for clothing for a holiday. Or right. From the car. So it's not just about the high profile. That's right. It's not well, just I think it's about high profile women. And if you like, I will do a bit of that. But I also want to talk about the women, the millions of women in this country who do a job looking after their family, looking after their home, guiding their children to be good citizens, and taking them to school, bringing them home from school, all the rest of it. Which I hope you appreciate. It isn't everybody that I invite in here. Right. Okay, <laughs> we do appreciate it and we're very privileged and <laughs> very glad to be here. Makes a change from the formal stuff downstairs, which you always do. Mm. Oh, where are you? Okay. 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 Right. How long is this going to take round? Um, five minutes. Then I know more. what I want to say. Okay. 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 Well, Madam Speaker, it's International Women's Day tomorrow, the women's debate uh, in the House today. Um, as one of the most high-profile women in the country, one of the most respected, does International Women's Day make a difference? I think it does, and I think it's right that we uh, note it, because um, women have made some progress over the years, not nearly enough. Um, there aren't enough women in this house that there should be, although we've now got about 10%. So I want to see more women here. There are occasions when I look down at that house and see the lovely colours, the dresses that the uh, women uh, members of parliament wear, which is quite a difference from the blue, grey-blue suits of the men. And I think sometimes when I sit in that chair and look at the gallery, that there are the ghosts of the suffragettes from time to time who look down and say, well, girls, you've not done too badly, but you've still got a long way to go. Well, you mentioned the suffragettes. <laughs> We're 80 years on, and, and there aren't really that many women in the House still. I, is, this, is that something that Parliament as a whole can address, or is it up to the individual parties with all women shortlists and things I think, like that? I think it is a great... I, I think it's a mixture of both Parliament and the parties. Um, I want to see more women come forward for selection conferences in all, in all the parties. I want Parliament to be able to make um, proper accommodation for women here and for their families. I mean, it is jolly difficult for a woman maybe who represents Scotland or Wales, the north of England, outside London, to have a young family, to leave that family at home. You've either got to have a gem of a granny to leave with them, or you've got to have enough money for a nanny. And we're, we're helping a little bit in that respect. But, you know, for women to do two major jobs isn't easy. From your unique vantage point, though, how would Parliament be different if there were more women here? Would there be less argy-bargy, less confrontation and more real work done? I think there may well be, actually. I find the women here in all parties make a very important contribution. They work jolly hard, not only in the chamber, but also in the select committees, in the standing committees, and they raise issues of women's issues as well as the general national issues. So they, they do, they really pull their weight in this house the women and you ask them to do something they always I know when I was before I became speaker when I was a whip in asking them if they would work on committees there was always a willingness to do that but do the hours do the, does the ritual discriminate against women I mean all these late sittings if you have a family it's virtually impossible. of course we, we have family. improved that over the years I mean I remember the day when we were here two or three o'clock in the morning the women were here too now we have changed a little but we still work as you well know, as you've just said, long hours and late hours, and it isn't very easy. This is why there's always got to be someone at home to take care of children. But would you like to see some of the rituals stripped away? I know you've done away with the speaker's wig, <laughs> a, a little blow there in, in the process. It has to be gradual. The House has to want it itself. I am the servant of the House, and I, 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 I take what the House wants to do and try and, and adapt it in that way. It is the House itself that makes changes. Perhaps the, the epitome of this, this, this argy-bargy, this confrontation that, that people see in the House is Prime Minister's questions. Now, both sides have said that they want to see some kind of reform made to that. Have you any ideas to help them along? 
And I, well, I've just explained to you, that must come from the House itself. We have procedure committees, we've got all sorts of groups and committees which look at these and come forward with proposals. And this is, this is the way we make progress. The, the Jopling report, uh, a, a report on, on uh, reducing the hours and of doing things differently, putting more work into committees. So all this goes on all the time and there is a, a desire to make us more effective and to improve our efficiency here. I just talk a little about, about your particular role. Um, it's said you have a remarkable grip on the House, a remarkable knowledge of procedure. Given that the House is mainly male, a lot of them are ex-public schoolboys, do you think they respond to a woman in the chair? I don't think it matters whether it's a man or a woman there, actually. Um, I've been likened to a schoolmistress or a nanny. I don't mind what people think of me, providing we get the job done. But you see, this house is a robust house. And it's right to a degree that it should be robust. People here, whether they're male or female, fight very hard to, to work, to, to, to get selected through their own caucuses. They fight the electorate to get elected. elected. When they come here, they want to make changes. It's right that we have this marvellous debate and this, 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 this argument across the floor of the House. Very few other parliaments, and I've seen many parliaments in the world, have the interventions and the things that we do here. But as you defend those rights of Parliament, every now and again you have to administer oh, some pretty strong slaps. Absolutely, the yes. You know, sometimes you give an inch and they take a yard. Um, but you give a little and then you take, you take it back with, with good humour and a smile and it's, uh, it's accepted. But inevitably it leads to, to one side sometimes saying, you know, you'll be over favouring the other. I mean, there are, to have there that. Are accusations at the moment of partiality during the, during the Scott report. Uh, debate. To How do you that. respond to that? I respond to it by referring people like yourself to actually what I said in there. That I said the report should be made available to all opposition parties. I, because I'm very concerned that minority parties here have their rights too. So all you do is just look at what I said carefully there. Madam Speaker, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Now, I haven't said anything that I wanted to say about women outside this house. Well, let's, well we, we, we can't pick think, up that point if we keep running. But I do want to talk about other women outside this house because right. there's too much emphasis on women, I think, in pro not too much, but there's a great deal of emphasis on women in professional life. Well, well can I just, are we recording this? Let, let, let's just compose mm. that. Um, How are you going to start running into that? Okay, can I Is the focus, though, do you think sometimes too much on Parliament? Is there, is there an over-obsession, as it were, about getting women into Parliament and it will all be different? I think there is sometimes. Um, and I think particularly when we're, we're uh, celebrating, if that's the right word, International Women's Day, you know there are millions and millions of women up and down this country who do a wonderful job in their own home, looking after families, looking after the elderly, looking after their children, taking them to school, collecting them from school, perhaps doing a, a part-time job or a full-time job, as well as running a home. These are the unsung heroines too, and we have never elevated those women. And I think when we do pay uh, a, a, a count or when we do celebrate International Women's Day, we should remember those women too who do a first-class job in their own communities with their families that we never think about and we never elevate as much as we should. Very powerful. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Speaker.